how much work is done moving the box to the end of the ramp. Um, you can do this problem more than one way. I recommend one way, but you can do this problem more than one way. I'll give you about two minutes. That's really all it should take is two minutes for you to do this, but you will, you will probably prove to me it takes longer. Try it in two minutes. There are a total of four forces that act on the box, but only three of them do work. The normal force doesn't do any work. The normal force is perpendicular to the ramp, and the box moves up the ramp, so there's no component of the normal force in the direction of motion, so it can't do any work. Uh, I'll remind you that the definition of work when we're dealing with constant forces, which these are, force times displacement times the cosine of the angle. This angle isn't the angle of the ramp. You guys have got to understand that just having an equation, all the thetas aren't the same thing. That theta is the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement. So, in fact, let's talk about that 40 Newton force. That's the easiest one to talk about. It's 40 Newtons. The box moves under its action 4 meters, and the angle between the applied force and the displacement is 0 degrees. It does 160 joules of work. Name another force that does work. All right, well, that sounded like a lot of different words. Um, there's friction. Friction, by definition, has to be parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the normal force. And, by definition, the frictional force has to be mu times the normal force. And this is a box on a ramp. So it's not like the normal force can't easily be memorized. For a box on a ramp, the normal force is mg cosine theta. So this is mu mg cosine, in this case, the theta is 20 degrees, the uh, angle of the ramp. This is just to get the size of the force, by the way. This cosine comes from looking at the component of the weight that is into the ramp. So I get our cosines and our sines and our thetas mixed up. They mean different things. If I want the normal force, I need the part of the weight that's into the ramp to find the normal force. That's mg cosine, the angle of the ramp. This all comes out to be 9 point something, if I recall. So 9.4 newtons. So the work done by friction... 9.4 newtons times 4 meter displacement times the cosine of the angle between friction and the displacement. What will that be? 180. Because as friction is down the ramp, the thing goes up the ramp. All right. Just want to make sure. So I get negative 37.6. All right, what's left? Work done by gravity. This one should be pretty easy. Um, looking at it, the gravitational force is 50 newtons. The displacement is four. And now I need the angle between the weight and the displacement, which pretty sure is this angle here. And by my advanced powers of computation, I added the 20 to the, fifth, to the 90 and got 110. Does that look good to you guys? Okay. So cosine of 110. And by the way, that was sarcastic. There was no advanced powers there. I know. So let's see. Is that 60 what? Negative 60 something. Negative 68.4 joules. All right. Now, you could have found 
the component of the weight down the ramp, which would be mg sine 20, and then find out how much work it does as it pushes the box up the ramp, and you will find it to be the exact same value. So there's more than one way to do this. But I'm thinking for gravity, it's probably easier just to do this. We good over there? Excellent. Total work is just the sum of all those things. So if I want how much work is done moving the box to the end of the ramp, I just have to add all those things up. And I believe you get like 54 joules. It's positive, which means when the box makes it up here, it has 54 joules of energy. That must all be kinetic energy. If there's any net work done, the net work has to equal the change in kinetic energy. All right, well, this is, uh, I think, problem number four in your homework. You should probably try some of the homework. There's a lot there. You should be moving through it. Question one and two, pretty straightforward. They're the same question, one with numbers, one without. Uh, question number three, you might need what's written at the top of that, uh, of that PowerPoint. We'll talk more about it tomorrow, but you should probably read that. Something about how you can find the work done if you have a graph. So I remind you that one of the things you should always do when given a graph is explore what the area of the graph means and what the slope of the graph means. A force versus position graph is going to have an area that means work. It's force times position. Try it. But in the short amount of time I have left before I have to go embarrass myself in chemistry, because those kids do not want to hear about what classes to take. They really don't. They want to talk to you, but they don't want to talk to me. I want you to imagine I have a, a, a box and a bookshelf. And the bookshelf is two meters high. And let's say the box is the same box from before. It's five kilograms. I want to lift the box up and place it on top of the bookshelf. Now... I want to be really clear about what I'm saying to do. What I'm saying is that I'm going to apply a force to the box straight up until I get it aligned with the bookshelf and then push the box on top of the bookshelf. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. can, can you do me a favor in using your advanced powers? Can you figure out how much work is done by gravity during that process? How much work is done by gravity? The work done by gravity has to be based on the force of gravity, which is downwards the entire time. So... I would say I'd start with work done by gravity equals, well, what's the force of gravity? 50 newtons. I even wrote it down for you. And what is the displacement of the box on its trip upwards? Two meters. Two meters. And what is the angle between the displacement and the applied force, or in the force of gravity? 180 degrees. So on the trip up, negative 100 joules of work is done on the box by gravity. I don't know how much work I do on the box necessarily, but that's how much is done by gravity. Now, I would assume that if I wanted to apply the least amount of force to the box to do this, then I would just be lifting with the weight of the box. Does that make sense? Like if I wanted to, to use the least amount of energy for me, because I just want it to be at the top of the, 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 the bookshelf. I don't want the box to have any kinetic energy when I'm done. I don't want it to throw the box upwards. I want to lift the box upwards so I can set it on the shelf. 
So the least amount of work I can do to get it up there is just to give it 100 joules of energy, right? Apply a force that is equal to the weight so the box moves at a constant velocity. And that will get me the box up to the top with the least amount of work done. If I give it 101 joules, then it has one joule of extra energy that it didn't need. That's going to be kinetic energy. The box is going to continue to move up until gravity stops it. Now, how much more work is done by gravity when I move the box to the side there? Zero. That's right. Zero joules of work is done moving the box to the side. Because gravity is still downwards, and I move the box to the side. I probably did a little bit of work. Right? I had to probably apply a force to push it to the side, slide it into the bookshelf. But I don't think gravity did any more work. This is how much work was done against gravity. Now, let's say, Mr. Shelton, not being careful, place the box more like right there. Is it likely to stay there? No, I'm pretty sure that once I um, remove my force uh, and leave it there, gravity will have an opportunity to bring the box back down to the ground. Would you agree? That means gravity will do probably 100 joules of work on the box, bring it back down, but this time it's positive work and there's no other force acting on the box so the box will probably gain kinetic energy. People have discovered or thought about this a lot. And although it's Newton who kind of put numbers to this, would you agree that if I wanted the box to be traveling faster when it makes it down to the ground, I could just lift it higher? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, this is not a particularly hard idea. You drop something from higher up, it'll be traveling faster when it makes it down. We, we kind of have evidence of this. People have discovered this, and more than just discovered it, they recognize that you could take the box, put it here, and save the fact that you move the box for later use. Like maybe wait till one of your friends is underneath the bookshelf. Maybe they're not really your friend. They're a person you don't really like very much. And since you've already put the box up here, you could just push it off and it would fall down and hit your friend, right? It's also the basic principle about how a hammer works. You lift the hammer up, you don't have to do much more, just let it fall downwards, and it will allow gravity to do the work for you, right? Hit the nail, perhaps push the nail in a small amount by doing some work on the nail. This has been defined, the idea of doing work against the conservative force, as storing potential energy. It's defined this way. So when I say defined, what we say is that potential energy is defined as negative the work done by a conservative force. So when I lifted the box, we did work against gravity. How much work? Negative 100 joules. We say the box now has 100 joules of gravitational potential energy because the amount of potential energy the box has is minus the negative 100 joules of work done by gravity, which means the box now has 100 joules of gravitational potential energy.